Somewhere between, say, the moons of Mars and the moons of the Earth, you will get enough mass where it does overtake, that the gravity will overwhelm the rigidity of the material. It will deform into the shape which requires the least energy to maintain, which is a sphere. The mass of the moon is sufficient to do that, yet it hasn't done that. How do we know that? Well, there's a number of ways we know that. The most prominent way we know that is the fact that there is two moments of inertia in the moon. Now, I'm gonna hold this pen as if it's locked into a single moment of inertia that coincides with its center of mass. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what I want you to do is try to grab each end of the pen and try to rotate it. No, rotate it in the horizontal plane. You're gonna easily overcome my resist. I'm gonna, I'm gonna resist, yeah, I can't, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, rotate it in the same plane. One moment of inertia, mm -hmm. two moments of inertia. Here is a spherically, radially symmetrical object. Mm -hmm. Let's imagine it is a sphere, and this is an axis, mm -hmm. and you are Earth's gravity field. Mm -hmm. So, again, rotate it. Very little resistance, right? Mm -hmm. But now you're Earth's gravity field and there's two moments of inertia. What's happened there is the moon is locked into Earth's gravity field in a one-to-one -one coupling between the spin of the moon on its axis and its revolution about the Earth. One-to-one -one spin orbit coupling. 